Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm going to be speaking this evening with Dr. Gail McIntyre, CEO of Aravive Incorporated, and she's joining us here on Health Professional Radio to talk about the urgent need for improved therapeutic approaches to treat patients with ovarian cancer who are resistant to standard care therapy. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. McIntyre. Thank you. Well, I did, of course, uh, mention that you are CEO of Aravive Incorporated. Give us a bit of your background and then uh, talk briefly about uh, Aravive's mission. Sure. So um, my formal training is in biochemistry and biophysics, actually, and I'm board certified in toxicology. I spent 30 years in the drug development business, started out as a technician at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and and really have a passion for developing cancer compounds. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be at Aravive where I think, you know, my 30 years now have, have come to a really good point and we have a really promising compound that, that we can talk more about. Now, is Aravive uh, strictly a, a cancer research uh, organization, a uh, company? It is. We're, we're primarily focused on cancer as well. We do have a discovery program that, that could go into fibrosis. There's some overlap there, but we're primarily focused on oncology. Now, we're going to talk this evening briefly about standard of care resistant ovarian cancer. Uh, Let's talk about ovarian cancer. Who exactly is, um, how many are uh, suffering from ovarian cancer, would you say? Sure. So this is a a scary disease. It's the fifth leading cause of death of women in the United States. Mm -hmm. It strikes women of all ages, races, and, and in the prime of their lives. And it's frequently called the silent killer because by the time the patients seek medical help, the disease has advanced. And that 70% of the patients are actually diagnosed with advanced disease. And five years later, less than 50% of them survive. So it's, it's a very, um, very um, you know, insidious disease. Is there, there a reason that it's um, not more detectable uh, early on? Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of good screening you know, the way we have for other cancers like cervical or breast cancer. I mean, this really is a disease in which patients have symptoms, and it's those symptoms that make them go to the physician to seek help. And again, by the time those symptoms emerge, the cancer is usually pretty late stage. So what is the the standard of care for advanced stage ovarian cancer? Sure. Let me talk about um, ovarian cancer in in general and the initial Mm -hmm. treatment. So typically what, what you'd like to do is a woman presents with, with ovarian cancer and it would be really great if you could, you know, the, the physicians would like to do surgery and remove that cancer. They call it debulking, take some of the tumor away. And then what they'll do is typically add, um, give patients chemotherapy and it'll usually be a platinum containing regimen. So for example, the, the patient after having surgery would get carboplatinum and, and peclitaxel and but the tumors can become resistant to the platinum chemotherapy. And once they do, that's, that's where the prognosis is poor. And that's where we're focusing right now. The overall survival is, is less than a year. And the p- patients can be treated with other therapies like paclitaxel and doxorubicin. Um, but the disease usually progresses on these other chemotherapies within three to four months. And the overall survival on these other chemotherapies is nine to 12 months. So there, there's no cure for platinum-resistant ovarian cancer, so it's a huge unmet medical need. And and when the disease progresses to that point, the objective is really to try to give women some quality time so that they can enjoy a particular milestone, like a wedding or birth of a grandchild, graduation, or, or simply the holidays. And so what our focus is at, at Aravive is, is developing a therapy that can add to that disease-free time and or survival without adding significant toxicity. And, and that's exactly um, what we think we have with AVB, AVB 500, our lead program. Once uh, the tumor is, is resistant to the, to the platinum, are there any other options available uh, once that takes place? Uh, yeah, so, so physicians can treat women with paclitaxel or doxorubicin or gemcitabine or topotecan. So there are a number of chemotherapies um, that that can be used. But again, 
the the time the patients have before their tumors start growing is usually about three to four months. Does the progression, uh, does it accelerate based on trying to treat it and it becoming resistant or is it simply resistant and progressing at its at the pace that it would have normally progressed or does the treatment or the, yeah. the failure make it uh, progress faster that's a really interesting question um, certainly as patients advance and have through their stages of therapy so as they they go to second line and then third line and then fourth line of therapy it does become more difficult to treat these patients. And if you look at the statistics, the actual time in which they have before their tumors start growing again becomes shorter and shorter with, which eat, with each subsequent therapy. And, and resistance is a, huge, is a huge problem. And that, again, is um, what our therapy targets is, is the resistant tumors. Now, exactly what is this therapy um, that you're, you're testing? Sure. So AVB 500, again, is our lead compound, and it's, it's actually a protein. And um, it, it's, we have a very novel approach to targeting metastatic disease. And the technology was actually licensed from a, a laboratory at Stanford University, Dr. Amato Giaccia. And he's still he's the founder of our company, and he still sits on our board. And let me talk a little bit about the biology. So sure. axel is a kinase that sits in the cell membrane, and it's activated solely by a protein called GAS6. And the binding of GAS6 to axel starts certain processes within the tumor cell that result in the tumor becoming able to migrate or move around and invade healthy tissue. And again, this pathway is also implicated in resistance to cancer therapies. And Aravise lead compound um, actually is what we call a soluble axle decoy protein. So it's similar to the axles that's sitting in the tumor cell, except it can and it doesn't initiate all those processes. And it actually binds um, very, very tightly to GAS6. It's been engineered to actually bind tighter to GAS6 than the endogenous um, axle. And so what happens is this protein, when you put it into say, a tumor-bearing mouse, what you'll see is that the ABB500 mops up that GAS6 and it, it removes it from the system. And by mopping up GAS6, you now don't have a protein that's going to activate, bind to and activate Axel and start all these downstream processes that result in, in invasion and cell movement and basically metastasis. And so you halt the metastasis at that point. Now, once you basically cut its legs out from under it, does it uh, begin to rapidly attack where it is rather than metastasizing elsewhere to healthy cells? And does, I guess, thereby giving you a greater chance to remove it or treat it? Well, it, it actually, um, what we've seen preclinically is that we'll actually see a decrease in the metastatic tumor volume. And actually in, in some animals, and you know, it's preclinical studies, we've actually seen 20 or 30% of the animals cured when we give our drug ABB 500 in combination with a chemotherapy like Dr. Rubicin. So by giving the two together, you actually get a, a really nice decrease in, in metastatic tumor growth. And what we've seen in women in our phase one B study is that, um, you know, some women have actually maintained their response for five to six months after after discontinuing their chemotherapy and just staying on our drug alone. We have one patient right now who is a complete responder at, at, at one dose, uh, the dose that we're going to take into our, our next study. And she responded after her first couple of cycles on ABB 500 plus paclitaxel. And then at six months, she dropped, the physician took her off the paclitaxel because this is a pretty, paclitaxel is a pretty toxic drug. You can't have women staying on this drug indefinitely, but we're allowing women to stay on ABB 500 for as long as they maintain their response. And, you know, she, this one woman is, has maintained her response now through cycle 13, so, you know, over a year, and half of that time has been on ABB 500 alone. Where can our listeners go and uh, get some more information about Aravive's uh, clinical developments and about the uh, company in general? Sure. Our website is aravive.com. 
Well, uh, Gail, I appreciate you joining us this evening. I know it wasn't a lot of time for such a vast topic, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll uh, have another conversation. Thank you. I really appreciate talking with you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 